Marilee, I'm really thrilled to talk to you today. Thank you so much for joining me. I absolutely love using your product. So why don't you tell my listeners, just introduce yourself, tell my listeners a little bit more about you. They've heard your bio, but something maybe that's not in your bio. Why do you do what you do? What keeps you motivated? Okay, well, I want to thank you for having me. It's really an honor. And basically, my story is I was in the dark and just without a clue as to what was impacting my health. I'd grown up very sickly. But anyway, two potentially devastating catastrophic things happened that had no good medical prognosis that opened my eyes to just a revolutionary, simple, basic common sense thing. And that was that food with harmful chemicals and products with harmful chemicals in our homes are undermining our health. And so that is really the basic reason why I'm sitting here right now. Because we, wow. I want to, you know, just share this information that transformed my family's life. Oh, that's incredible. Well, you tell the story of your son who was very badly harmed, Douglas, harmed by pesticides and, and the doctors had like t- kind of no hope. And now he's married with kids living in Texas and, and you swear by the fact that you cleaned up his, the environment. So could you tell us about that? Well, basically, let me, the exposure was so extreme that the doctors told us he would never regain his brain function. Wow. Damaged. And then the next thing he said, and he's going to be a bubble boy for the rest of his life, meaning he can't detoxify the chemicals that, you know, we just don't even think about every day because our bodies are incredible. You know, they can clear what we're exposed to. But anyway, he had had a complete immune breakdown. And when the doctor told me that he would never recover his, his mental function, I just looked at him and I said, well... I'm really sorry. And I said it with respect. I said, yes, you're not God, but my son is going to recover. And he actually took my hand, looked me in the eye and he said, listen, the brain does not regenerate. Oh, gosh. When was this? How many years? How many years ago was that? And I said to him, I said, I'm sorry. I can't be subject to what medicine has to offer me today. I know my son's going to function, you know, recover. And of course, science didn't know about neuroplasticity then. And I'd had some experience with, I mean, I had been actually at one point pre-med and studied a lot and I just couldn't buy into that. So anyway, the doctor told us to go home just create, you know, create a safe room for, for him. So he was going to be like a bubble boy, 23 shots and all these drugs to give him every day to control him. The bottom line, it ended up that the discovery of just how much even small amounts of these chemicals and products affect us, you know, that was a turning point that actually was understanding that was the key to his real true recovery. And It was kind of interesting how this came about. We were sleeping outside on cots because he was so sensitive. We couldn't get the house Mm. so that he could sleep well at night. So one night I was laying there thinking, what is it that I have not done? And I had this thought come into my head. And it was, oh, get up and go get that box. It's in your closet. Now, I had thrown everything out. We had stripped our house completely, but I had kept a few of my favorite perfumes, a few of my favorite products. And I thought, I'll just put these in a box and put them in the closet. And when it gets better, I'll take them out. Anyway, I did that in the night. I didn't tell my husband. I didn't tell my son because I was doing a scientific experiment. And the next day, I was inside and I was doing cooking and he would come in, you know, and he sat and he was going to eat. And about 10 minutes after we started, you know, he was in there, he goes, mom, what did you do? And I said, what do you mean? What did I do? And I just acted completely like I had no idea. I said, I I have no idea. Why don't you just, he said, he said, I'm not feeling like I need to get up and leave. Something's not bothering me right now. And so basically I said, well, let's just see how long that lasts. And the bottom line is he ended up spending the night and we, and 
I even second guessed. I thought this is crazy. This is coincidence. Yeah. But I said, I have to understand what has happened here. And a couple of days later, I was at the grocery store and I, I turned the corner to go down the aisle where the pesticides and the cleaning products are. I literally stopped and I had this huge aha moment. And that was, oh my gosh, these products are all not only closed, but they're also sealed. And yet in parts per million, per billion, they're coming out into the air. Wow. That, that's what was happening with my son who was so sensitive. So anyway, bottom line, we found that baseline. And so I started understanding just how much these products impacted us because I had to go and I had to find things that were non-toxic. Mm. So back then there were, we had, you know, health food stores and all. And so I got the non-toxic products. I bring him home and he would react. I mean, he would react with oh. either. Maybe he would become very angry. He'd become depressed. He'd throw himself on the floor with a headache, you know, screaming that I was talking too loud because, and I would be whispering even. And sometimes so hyperactive, sometimes just almost, you would ask him a question and there would be this, you know, this weight in his response. And I realized, started realizing, oh my gosh, these products have non-toxic on the label. And yet this is what's happening. So I started studying ingredients, trying to understand more and more. And oh my goodness, it was just revelation, you know, in, in the industry, the purpose when we, you know, we make our products in this, this age of chemistry, it's we want something to work. We want something to smell good. We want something to attract people. And human health is not the first priority. And there's actually no regulation of cleaning, cleaning products whatsoever. You do not even have to have an ingredient list. Now, the non-toxic products do generally have a list. But we're in this evolution now of opening our eyes and understanding more and more and we don't really understand which of these chemicals are hurting us and of course going through by the old or the toxicology model the dose makes the poison which means oh a little bit of this is not going to hurt we're learning now that that's not true and the science of epigenetics you know is yeah. showing that even a small amount can turn on and off genes. So anyway, my son recovered. It was, a, it was a long period. There was no internet. There were no cell phones. You know, I was researching and trying to figure out what to do. He had been brilliant before the exposure. And he went to the, I mean, doing complex math. And he went to not being able to spell a three-letter word or do something. Wow. And of course, as, as the doctor said, he'll never recover that. Well, I did a lot of work with him in terms of his, you know, getting his mind back. And as we got all the chemicals out, we got that foundational part taken care of. And I had been trained in using food as medicine, so I was cooking for him medicinally. As time you know, went on and he got all of his brain function back and he recovered. And in this process, as I was learning, I, I started having this realization, oh my gosh, everyone is living in this toxic chemical soup in their homes because they have hundreds of products strewn throughout their house that are emitting in low levels. And so after he recovered, I started getting calls just by word of mouth from people all over the country that had chem had, had chemical injury or who were chronically ill, et cetera. And I used this principle. And the, so the first thing I do with everyone is, first of all, is I would get their perspective on how they were thinking about it. Because usually if people came to me, they'd been gone to many doctors, they'd spent all their money, et cetera. And, you know, I just wanted to see, do they have hope? You know, what is their thinking? So that's my first thing I'd address. But then the next thing always is I would go through with each person and have them remove cleaning products, toxic products from the home because I saw, you know, with my son exactly how absolutely impactful it was. Well, 
what I found was is that removing pesticides and cleaning products dramatically improved most people's homes. Oh, just right. And sometimes just incredible transformations just from that. I would have calls from people saying, Oh my gosh, I can't believe it. I, I, you know, I didn't have to get up in the night, you know, with having a problem with you know, my, my nose getting all stopped up, et cetera. And so I developed this step-by-step, category-by-category, simple, simple process. It doesn't cost any money. And this is a great thing. We always think we're looking for the magic pill or the yes. magic therapy when really what might be the problem is right under your nose, literally. Mm-hmm. What, you know, that bottle standing there in your kitchen that is emitting all of these chemicals. Mm-hmm. So I just have people to take a box and the first category is to get pesticides out. Remove those, you know, DEET, any kind of insect repellent, roach spray, et cetera, because those are the most toxic products you can have in your house. And then we go to the cleaning products, just get them in a box and get them out. And, you know, people go, oh, my gosh, I can't take my products out. Well, I have a solution for that. What we're trying to do is improve air quality, so we have to remove them. And so if people are concerned that they, you know, they don't have replacement products yet, you get a container and you can put it in your garage or an outbuilding or something and keep them out of your house, out of your air supply so that you can make experience that dramatic change. Wow, that's brilliant. A brilliant, simple idea. Well, you know, it never would have come to me except that my son's situation was so extreme and that clarified it. And so, you know, I literally have people that go through these categories and their, sim- their chronic symptoms are gone. Just saying, no, there's something wrong. If, you, if you're taking over-the-counter medication for a headaches or allergies, you know, just remove these products and see what happens. We, we don't realize how much they impact. So what you're saying there is very interesting because it's not that they just contained within the container or the bottle, but they're actually also escaping into the air. So you're breathing the stuff as well. So it's just good to get them all out of your house as you replace and, and get something that's healthy, like the products that you have, which are totally clean, which we'll talk about now, the branch basics. But you also explain, you've got some great videos on, on YouTube as well, explaining about the products. And you speak about, you know, things like dryer sheets and just the standard cleaning products, how they're going into your machine and into your clothes and into your sheets and, and in the air. So you just immersed in this toxic chemical bath as you mentioned in the beginning and you saying if I'm hearing you correctly that one of the first things you need to do is just to be aware of all of those from the hair products to the makeup to the cleaning products etc how you clean your house your clothes and to get all of those out of your house that's the first step is to get those out of your house and to replace with healthy clean products and then from there to introduce once you've got the basics in place obviously then we address diet etc etc mind all these things but mind is always dominant because you're making that decision and you you mentioned something interesting earlier on about your son was the doctors told you that your son was just that they couldn't do anything about it that was obviously back in the 80s early in the late 80s because that was when I was studying and I was also told the brain can't change and that's when I did my first work in neuroplasticity and it was I was told my, by my professors that that's a ridiculous question so I said well watch me let me take people with brain damage and stimulate their mind and, and they changed I mean cognitively intellectually and on every level literally so I totally agree with you there and thank goodness you had the foresight to find that and to you know examine all these things and now we can all benefit from your great products i love them i'm using them you kindly sent us a pack and it's fantastic i use it with my laundry with my i love that powder that you add to the laundry you use so little of the the washing liquid and the towels were just so soft the clothes smelled amazing everything feels different that was what i found interesting it all felt different and so i, I was very and i've been using non-toxic products but i love yours so tell us about branch basics what is branch basics and obviously it grew out of all of this research from your son and and helping all these people over the years? Well, Branch Basics is a product. Actually, we have two products. And I always say our products are for our mission. And they're, they're products with a purpose because these two products can replace every toxic cleaning product in the home from window cleaner, 
to oven cleaners and they're so mild and safe. You can use them on a baby. And the formulation was quite an exercise. As I mentioned earlier, you know, when Americans, where we make products, usually our first focus is on, is it going to work? So, of course, oh, my gosh, if we put a cleaning product out that didn't work, who cares? Who cares how safe it is? <laughs> but we used our human health as a priority. So it took us a couple of years and hundreds of uh, over 100 iterations to finally get the product. We didn't want it to irritate the eyes. We didn't want it to irritate the skin. We did not want it to irritate the lungs. And that was quite a challenge. And truly, the formula is based on my client experience. You know, we would work with the chemists and they'd say, oh, we need to use a little bit of this, a little bit of that. I say, no, we cannot. We cannot use it. it. This is an irritant. And they would say, but it's just such a little bit. And it actually was interesting because we kept trying to get the formula so that it didn't irritate the eyes and the lungs. And, and we just wasn't quite what we wanted. And we discovered that the chemists thought it didn't really matter. So they were using one of the ingredients that I had said no. And we discovered that and they took it out and here we are. Oh, wonderful. That's fantastic. So you've got two basic products that can replace every pl product in the house. And when I thought about that, I thought that's incredible because I'm using detoxic free, healthy, organic products as it is, but I have so many. So now I'm thinking I've got these two shelves full of all these different things. Now, when your stuff came, I thought I took everything out, put that all in a box and I have a nice neat closet with just under my under my sink with just your stuff in and it's doing everything. And then I have you know the bottles up in the laundry as well. And it's just cleaned up, but besides cleaning up the clutter, it's just so simple. So can you explain how that works? Well, we have a concentrate and we have three balls. We have one for all purpose, one for bathroom and one for windows, street free and mirrors, etc. So you, you fill the bottle with water and then we have, in, like for the all purpose, we have a, a line that tells you how much concentrate to use and you top it off with water. You've got your all purpose. You do that for your bathroom, which has more concentrate. Our window cleaner, you only need one drop. It sounds crazy, but it is fantastic. I couldn't believe that. You know, I, I tried that. I thought, let me see if this works. And I had toothpaste all over my mirror. And I put, you know how it always shoots all over the mirror with those electric toothbrushes? <laughs> and it was all over the mirror. So I sprayed that on. Whoops, my mirror was perfect. It was incredible. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's incredible. You can use it on your oven. It's incredible the the versatility, and like I would like I was saying, it's so mild that it's safe enough for a baby's skin. That's incredible. I tried it in my, I have a great floor clean and I have beautiful black and white porcelain tiles and they show the dirt so quickly. And I was using the products that I was advised to use for the machine that I have. And it was always felt tacky, the floor, and it seemed to get dirty quicker. Now, since I've been using your product in the, in that machine, the floor, I only have, I don't clean it as often because it doesn't seem to pick up, the, it doesn't seem to be holding the dirt. It's easy. I can just vacuum it off and it's not, there's no streaks and there's no stickiness. And that was fascinating. And the porcelain tiles are absolutely shining. I mean, I love it. Oh, that's, that's so great. Well, you said something important. You're using a lot of non-toxic products and, and that's wonderful. A lot of people I work with, they'll come to me and they're still not quite having the results they want. And what I found is, is that even people who are very aware will still have products in the house that have harmful ingredients. And sometimes the, the non-toxic products are a problem. So there's two issues. One, we need to remove the things that aren't safe. And then we need to make sure of what we keep is safe. And there's, you don't have to be a chemist. You don't have to be a scientist to vet problem, products. It's very simple. You can just go to EWG Skin D, type in the, an ingredient in your product. And I usually say, go to the last ingredient. And we recommend you say, keep products with a one or a two rating from EWG Skin D in your house. If you've got a product with more than a two, three, a, three to 10, you know, 10 being the most toxic, you know, remove them. Get rid of that. Yes. 
Well, that's a really great resource. And we'll put that up in the show notes, that link. And we'll also put up your webpage and everything in the show notes so people can get hold of that. Can you talk about, you explained it so beautifully, how the toxins can affect our mental health. You know, could you talk about some of the major culprits? I know there's so many, but some of the major one compromising our mental and physical health that can be found in common household cleaners that maybe we kind of turn a blind eye because, you know, we like using the bleach, especially in this COVID era. Everyone's using everything that is bad just to try and keep surfaces clean. And is that such a good thing? Well, that's, you know, the COVID virus is really bringing this into closer focus. I, I love, I'm so sorry about what's happening, but good can come out of this. You are so right. These products have chemicals in them that directly affect our mental ability, our ability to, you know, concentrate, focus, our mood. And the first thing I always ask a person is, what do you use for your laundry? And many times people say, oh, I use fragrance laundry, you know, detergent, and I use fragrance dryer sheets. And fragrance products are one of the most toxic. They are neurotoxins. They also have a whole wide list of other problems, carcinogenic, you know, obesogens, asthmogens. But they affect our ability to think. They affect our kids' behavior. And so we want to take all of the products out of our house that have a fragrance. You know, now I have to make the caveat, if it's it's an organic, wild-crafted essential oil, that's different. But we're talking about the word fragrance on on the label. Mm -hmm. So that's one that's a real red flag for the brain. Then another one that's not so well known and it's found in a lot of the non-toxic products and that is the isothiazolinone family like mesoisothiazolinone. Those are used as preservatives in many of the non-toxic products. And I discovered this issue way back with my son I mean, absolutely, you know, you have the learning disabilities, the behavior problems. He would just become out of control when that particular, you know, a product with that that chemical would come into our house. So, of course, bleach, anything, you know, with the high VOCs that's going to affect the brain, can cause confusion. A lot of the products have EPA registered pesticides. That's our disinfectants. Not all of them have them, but a lot of them do. And pesticides, absolutely. As, as a, my son's brain damage was from pesticides, but they damage our brains and our ability to think. So those are a few of the red flags. So the impact on our mental health is significant in terms of, because you mentioned in one of your videos on YouTube about depression. And I know with my own research on, I've written on Think and Eat So Smart is a book I wrote and I put in a lot of information about food and a little bit about toxins as well. But from my own research and working with patients over the years, I'd also try and get their houses clean and detoxed as much as possible because of the impact on increasing anxiety and depression. In your experience, have you found the same in your research that those toxins can be a contributor to the feelings of angst and anxiety, depression, feeling like flat for no reason? And there's always a multiplicity of reasons. There's never just one. But Definitely, would you say that toxins are a contributing factor in how? 100% and, and more. It's tragic to think about our children sitting in schools and having these chemical spray when it's impacting the way they act, it's their, their moods, their ability to think. And I have worked with many, many kids that have serious learning difficulties, serious mental and emotional issues. Wow. And I will say that, I mean, one one child in particular, six-year-old boy, he was, the mother called me, his school had told her that that they needed to get him on stronger medication because they couldn't control him at school. The little boy had asthma. He had a whole lot of problems, but he was uncontrollable. The father, in fact, you know, had just decided, you know, his son was not even helpable. They couldn't control him at home, at school. So anyway, after I talked to her for a little bit, I found out she used the very most toxic type of of products, laundry products, scented, et cetera. 
bottom line is the first thing we did is we got him out of his clothes because you're in your clothes 24-7. You take them to school. You sleep in them. You're, you know, you're, they're next to you. And lo and behold, the changes that that mother saw just from taking her cleaning products out and changing the laundry, the child ended up getting off his medication totally. He wow. ended up completely recovering. The father actually called me in tears, crying, because he said, I mean, he was sobbing and said, I can't believe that I did not even like my son. And we were distorting who he really was. And now, you know, he's an obedient, compliant, loving child. And we were, I worked with him for, on diet as well. But, that, but after we did this initial I'm so pleased to hear you say that, you know, when I was back practicing for 25 years back in South Africa, and it was through the late 80s and into the early 2000s, and that was when there was such a burst of new chemicals onto the market. And I saw the impact on my patients because I worked with all ages from very young through to 70s and people in their 70s and 80s. And I always part of my treatment protocol was we had to detox the environment. And it was really hard to convince people in those days because of the advertising that was bringing in all these amazing new products and the Teflon plans and the this particular cleaning thing and this will keep... But those were just adding to the problem. And we saw, and, and like you did, when we removed those from the people, from our, my patients' environments, it definitely made a massive impact on focus, concentration, um, depression, anxiety, managing moods, all that kind of stuff. So I'm so glad that you brought that up. And then physical health. I mean, can you talk a little bit about toxic products hurting physical health? Oh, absolutely. They, for instance, the fragrance chemicals themselves, they are asthmogens, as I mentioned, that comes yes. asthma. asthma is the number one chronic illness in children today. Carcinogens, you know, we have one in two men, one in three women getting cancer. Mm. And cancer is the number one killer of children after accidents. These are the neurotoxins. They are obesogens. They make us fat. They make us you know, more vulnerable to type 2 diabetes. And they are endocrine disruptors. So, you know, we have a tremendous issue in this country today with, you know, just chronic degenerative disease, everything from Alzheimer's, dementia. Then we have the autoimmune issues. Just, just goes on and on. Um, and scientists have directly linked this exponential rise to our exposure to these chemicals. And going back to the mind and affecting the mind, I found too that in the diet, you know, we're concerned about today many times, you know, well, should I eat the paleo or this or that? But one of the things that I think we're missing, just like with removing products, is the first thing we need to look at at food is first, it needs to be real food. If you go to the health food stores and you buy anything in a box, organic on a label is not enough. Yeah. We've got to read labels because I've found that excitotoxins mm-hmm. are key to anxiety attacks and a lot of the problems we're having with, you know, our children too and behavior. I love that. I love that you said that. You know, you can track back to the beginning of the modern of the American modern American diet, the MAD diet, and the introduction of all the processed food and the chemicals. You can track a drop in mental and physical health with that time as as that increased. So we had a drop, and it's it's so true. I always say in when I teach on food as well that there's one rule for eating because you can eat paleo, keto, whatever you want, but as long as it's real food, as you said, and you eat it mindfully. You know that your mind is involved because your mind controls your digestive system. So I'm so glad you said that. Environment. How do toxins? Can you talk briefly? About about how toxins are damaging our environment? Well, of course, it's, you know, the, when you're looking at clean products, we have today a movement for sustainability, for, you know, ecological, you know, we don't want to harm the planet. So a lot of these chemicals, if you look at your bottles, it'll say, do not throw away, except send to a hazardous dump. Okay, so... I'm thinking, all right, I'm putting this all over my house, and yet this tells me not to do that. So you're not supposed to pour it outside, and you know, and it'll get into the waterway and everything. It needs to be safely disposed of. You know, we're contaminating our waterways. 
Today, we're finding so much many chemicals in our water supply, you know, dropping down into the, the water table. We have, you know, all of these industrial chemicals from our products that you know, we're now drinking. So it's very, the contamination is so widespread. Finding chemicals in polar bears. It's that terrible. We people. So. That's terrible. Like we have to take cognizance of this. We can't just pretend it's not happening. It's it's a reality. It's it's everywhere, and we have to do something about it. So besides swapping, I mean, there's you have a lot of advice on helping people to change over. But how can we protect ourselves in just general once we clean up our homes? But what about when you're in hotels and planes and other people's homes, and they most likely could be using the toxic cleaning products? Is there something we can do in those situations? Well, if you think about it. When we go places, we don't have control. Mm -mm. We go to the store, we go to work, we go to someone's house. But we do have control at our house. And what I found that if we make sure that we have removed the harmful products from our homes and we've replaced them with safe ones, that gives our, us a safe haven so that every day that we come home, we are able to renew, regenerate, restore. And we can go out and we can be in the world. You know, like we, the body is so wonderfully made and we can tolerate a lot. It's just the fact that we have such a high impact, you know, one thing after another, you know, hundreds, thousands of chemical mm -hmm. exposures. It's just the amount. We just have to lower our total load. So, therefore, you know, my son you know, was unable to go anywhere. Nobody could come into our house. We were in major shelter in place. We could, it was like COVID on steroids mm. because we couldn't go anywhere. He couldn't go anywhere. If I did go somewhere, I had to decontaminate when I came home, et cetera. But my point is, is that he was so seriously ill wow. and compromised, but he completely recovered. Wow. And that Recovery was because he was in an environment where he could truly heal. If you're going places, you can make smart, you know, if you go to a restaurant, of course, you make good decisions on the food. If you go somewhere and you notice that, you know, there's something very toxic, you know, you go to a building and, oh my gosh, there's some sort of chemical spill or something, you would turn around and walk out. Mm -hmm. but in general, you can function. I mean, my son went on to go to the Naval Academy. He flew in missions. You know, he's lived in Japan. He's lived, been all over. He's normal. He functions normally. So once our body is healed and we keep making sure that we restore in our place where we're sleeping and spending the majority of our day in our clothes and that kind of thing, we can have enough resilience to be able to fight off what's out there. And then in that way, try to control it. Well, that's, you know, that's really good advice. Uh, just one last question. You talk about in, in one of the videos about once you've been using all these products in your home and you, you, it's in the air, it's in your clothes, there's a process to go through to decontaminate in your own home. Is that, can you briefly explain that? And do you have more about that on your webpage? Okay, so each time you take a category out, starting with pesticides and laundry products, fragrance products, your skincare, you have made a dramatic improvement in your air just by doing that. I mean, very quickly. It's all of a sudden there's a lower level. But if you've used a lot of fragrances, for example, fragrance candles, those chemicals are so strong, they're designed to impregnate into materials. For instance, your drywall, it will get into your drywall. So there'll be a period of time after you, if you've used a lot of fragrance products, after you take things out, that you might still be able to pick up the scent. And so what we recommend is we have a deep cleaning process that's very effective for removing these chemicals, but it basically you're cleaning your ceilings, walls, and floors with a specific protocol. And also opening your windows a couple of times, maybe 10 minutes in the morning, 10 minutes in the evening, that'll flush out what's, you know, remaining. And, you know, it just takes a little bit of time, but mm -hmm. every day it'll get better and better. That's fantastic. Like you would need the source. Wow, that's amazing. Well, I love that. So, Marilee, where can people find out more about Branch Basics and all this information? And how can they get their hands on this incredible product? 
They can go to branchbasics.com. We have Instagram. Just contact us. Go on the website. We've got a shop page and hopefully you'll give it a try. Absolutely. And you've got lots of great videos online as well on YouTube that give a lot of information about how to, the things that we've discussed today as well. So Create your healthy home create a healthy home that's right fantastic well wonderful well thank you so much for what you've done and for this great product that i love and i'm so glad that i'm using it now and it's streamlined and simplified our cleaning life and it has it really does work i love it it just makes everything feel wonderful and, and thank you that it's not only a great product but it's also helping our brains and our mental health and our physical health which is just so important and i want to thank you for doing creating this wonderful product and for your knowledge and for sharing it with the world thank you for having me it was great Great pleasure. Great talking to you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye-bye.